breaking news. I actually like Austin Booker a lot. Um, you may not be able to tell that from the title of the video. You may not be able to tell that from my Twitter interactions recently. But I do, in fact, like Austin Booker. So the reason I'm making this video is because someone on Twitter named I'm Bearing Down. Uh, shout out to you, buddy. I'm going to be using your um, compilation that you made of Austin Booker on this video. And if you have any issues with that, obviously reach out to me. I'll never do it again. Um, but this channel isn't monetized anything like that. Not profiting off of you. So, again, thank you. Um, but what I was trying to say is that I watched that compilation on Austin Booker, obviously, as per this video. And I came to the conclusion that last night, Austin Booker had a bad game. Now, I'm not saying that Austin Booker is a bad player or that the game that he had last night was an indication that he's going to be a bad player. Nothing like that. What I'm saying is that Austin Booker last night against the Houston Texans had a bad game. And that's quite all right. Yannick Ngakwe has had many bad games for the Chicago Bears, and many Bears fans want Ngakwe back. It, it, it happens. Players have bad games, and that's okay. I want to kind of go through the breakdown here. I'll, I'll switch over the screen. As you can see, my good buddy Adam Mason um, and others, we, we've came to the conclusion that there's a disagreement between myself and everyone else, and that's quite all right. So I'm going to do my best to go through these clips and explain to you why he had a bad game. I need to give a little bit of context. I am not a former NFL or any sort of football coach or player. So I don't want you to think that I know better than you because I don't. I'm just using my eyes and I'm telling you what I'm seeing. So I hope I don't come off as saying Austin Booker's a bad player. Oh, he had a terrible game. He needs to get cut. All this bullshit. No. I'm just saying that Austin Booker, in my opinion, had a bad game last night. And I'm going to try and explain myself now. Um, I apologize if this video seems unprofessional because, well, it is. This is going to be a one-cut only video. This is the first time I've started this. I'm not going to stop at this point. And I also want to make it very clear, A, that I'm sick. So I apologize for the nose. It's even worse than normal. And B... Um, this is not a reflection on the thoughts of Nick, a.k.a. Smy, on this channel. And it definitely is not a reflection of the thoughts of Bears Country Podcast, anything like that. These are my thoughts alone. And if you think I'm wrong, point me out in the comments. Let's have a civil discussion and talk about it. That said, let's get into the damn thing. So, not only did I'm Bearing Down compile these clips in a very professional manner, but he also was nice enough to show us what player that is before or what player Austin Booker is before the snap. So again, shout out to you, buddy. So first clip here, he's going to come in. And as you can see, he just gets annihilated. I mean, he gets stonewalled by the running back and blown back. I mean, he literally is, he's not even moving from that point. As soon as he hit the running back, the play is dead from an Austin Booker standpoint. So that's a complete loss. Next play here is a pass rush set, also a loss. He barely gains any ground on the left tackle, and as soon as the engagement happens, the arms there, once they lock, the play is over from an Austin Booker standpoint, and obviously that's true for everyone else in that defensive line. He wasn't double teamed. We're going to get into that too. I had someone on Twitter saying, oh, Austin Booker was being double teamed. He was schemed against. Come on. You think that the Houston Texans are scheming against a fifth-round rookie defensive end? What the Texans are doing is they're trotting out their offense as if it was the starting offense and seeing what players can fit into their system to see who's going to make their 53-man roster. They're not scheming to win a game against Austin Booker. That said, second rep, totally stonewalled. Next clip. Comes in. The play is to his side, yes? The ball is in the hands of number 19. He's engaged with the tight end. The play is definitely not over from his standpoint once the ball is in this position, right? He's doing a great job. Look at the hits principle. He's running back. He's doing a great job of actually coming back and showing effort on the play, right? So, I mean, this is not a complete loss on Austin Booker's end, but he had no impact on that play. Yet, yes, the, the blocker didn't yet end up you know blocking him, pancaking him, whatever. But 87 is still able to, in my opinion, he could have thrown a block. He's just not the most able player, right? He wasn't faster than the running back or whoever got the receiver on the, or got the ball, rather, the receiver on the jet sweep, whatever the case is. He's not fast enough to catch up to 30. That's fine. He should have made a play. Austin Booker had no impact on that play. He essentially got erased from the play. 
again, just another. He does actually fight off the left tackle, 57 here, and does a good enough job to try and, you know, get himself up. He, he probably has a chance to make a tackle if the ball is coming that way. But, again, just totally disregarded at that point. That's not – this is not a pass – I don't because this is something that Adam Mason put on Twitter, right? Um, and what I've been seeing everyone trying to defend Austin Booker's game last night. He had a, a 23% pass rush win rate. Is that considered a win on a passing down? The quarterback gets sacked. And in fact, this video is going to double as a shout out to number 52 on the Bears. He had a great game. Watch this finish. Fuck you. Takes him off his feet. That was a great finish. Let's watch it again from 52. Just totally fuck you. That's awesome stuff, man. But that's a loss from Austin Booker for my money. Again, left tackle, one-on-one. -on -one. Did he win that rep? Maybe. Is that a win on a pass rush set? That would be a damn travesty to have that kind of as a loss for the left tackle. This The playing surface, by the way, last night, terrible. A lot of people slipping. And I can't tell if this bull rush move is number 57 simply, simply slipping because of this poor field. I mean, for again, for my money... That is a a loss on the end of Austin Booker. That's unfortunate that I just did that, but I need to make sure that my mic looks good as well, which it does, which is great. Okay, so let's move on. Again, another loss from Austin Booker, in my opinion. Left tackle, one-on-one, -on -one, watch the hits principle. Look at where he is. He's almost at the, the line to gain when the tackle is made. Austin Booker is trying his ass off. The hits principle is alive and well with Austin Booker. That's not the, the effort is not the issue with Austin Booker. But it's a complete loss on the actual block. I don't know if this is the play. Yeah, I mean, he, he gets engaged, locked up, and then if that was a pass rush set, he'd be totally screwed. But on a running play, he recognizes it, which is probably a good thing, sure. But the hit, I'm not questioning his effort, and again, I'm not saying that Austin Booker is a bad player. The idea here is that he had a bad game. Again, zero impact on that play. Again, the idea here was for him to come on a stunt, right? And I can't tell if it's matching with the other defensive end, number 52. It isn't. 52 is just crashing. Austin Booker is actually on the loop immediately. And I don't know if that's by design. You'd have to assume so, right? But on the loop here, look, he can't get past the center. Totally stonewalled. He makes no impact, and he realizes that. So... Instead of just loafing, the hits principle alive and well, watch him jump and try and catch the ball. Or, you know, tip the ball. And shout out, 45, you're fucking trash. If you make the Bears roster, I'm going to do unspeakable things to my body. But that's another loss on the end of Austin Booker. Stonewalt. He, he, it was a pass rush set. If you consider that a pass rush win, you're wrong. That was a bad rep. I, again, I, I don't want to... It makes me feel like I'm being so critical on the guy, right? It's not a bad rep. It's a zero-impact play. He gets engaged with the left tackle, has to bounce out. He's even, look at how he was positioning his body. He was getting ready to block because he thought that play should have been an interception because I agree it should have been an interception. And he's getting ready to block. But as from a pass rush standpoint, that was a loss on the end of Austin Booker. Totally disregarded and was blocked out of the play. We go again. This time they're asking him to go into coverage, which this reminds me of a lot of uh, Leonard Floyd. When Leonard Floyd and even Khalil Mack at times, stupid by the way, would be asked to drop back on a 3-4. So this is a really interesting play design. They're, what, bringing on a blitz from the left side, the bottom of the screen? Yeah, 27's coming in. I don't know who 27 is off the top of my head. But they're coming in on a blitz, so he's subtracting Austin Booker on that side to come into coverage. Sure, whatever. It's a stupid play. But he does a fine job, right? He makes zero impact on the play. He probably cut off the, the pass to whoever that is at the top of the screen. I'm pointing like you can see my fucking hand. I've been doing that the whole episode. I'm sorry. Um, I don't, wouldn't say that this is a bad rep. It was a bad play design. But again, zero impact on the play from Austin Booker. Just That's not a win either. Does he touch the quarterback? Yes, but... The left tackle is slipping. He's on one knee. He's on his hands and knees begging because the field is so bad. Was that bull rush good enough to knock him down? I'm skeptical, but 
Um, we'll chalk that up as a, another non-impact play. 76 ends up cleaning him up good enough to allow his quarterback to get a, the balls out of his hands before he's touched, right? So again, zero impact from Austin Booker. Uh, the PFF guys will tell you that was a hurry, a hurry on the quarterback, right? No, it wasn't. Zero impact, and to be quite flat, just another great play from the Texans to have their player out and open. Um, again, next play, just completely disregarded. If I didn't point him out, you wouldn't know where he is. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage by the guard. So again, I don't even think that he was coming in on a stunt, right? Yeah. Um, they're using a zone blocking scheme coming down at a 45-degree angle towards the bottom of the screen, right? So the guard gets his hands on Austin Booker, plays over for Austin Booker. He's completely erased. Next play. Oh, this, this is one of the plays that I wanted to talk, out, talk about. Because from the naked eye, you're going to tell me, okay, Austin Booker's getting double teamed. They're scheming against the great Austin Booker. Again, it's zone blocking. Obviously, it's play action, but they're still using the same blocking technique to kind of sell that to the defense. Um, you're trying to trick them. Because why would you block a different way for a different type of play? It if it's play action, you're still blocking like it's a run play because that's how you're scheming it up. Um, you just don't want to give any tells. So watch this. The left tackle immediately meets him, right? And the left guard is looking for action. No one's on top of him because this guy goes in with the center. So the left guard is just looking for action. He has nothing to do, right? He completely blows up Austin Booker. Watch. Looking for work. Boom. That's it. He gets blown up. He doesn't get killed, right? He's still standing on his feet. Bravo to Booker. But it's just another complete non-impact. And overall, the quarterback's naked on this bootleg, right? Because the fucking... The 4-3 is trash. The 4-3 is a trash system, in my opinion, for this type of stuff. Um, but watch watch 52. 52 on, on the other end, the other defensive end. He's actually going to knife in and get the quarterback to kind of essentially... I would call this a quarterback hurry. That's a pass rush win, and he's making the quarterback run like a little silly head out of the pocket there. So that's an, another win for 52. 52 was more impressive than Austin Booker last night for my money. So again, tries to cut inside, can't even get over the left tackle. The left tackle is able to get there, completely clean him up. There's no impact whatsoever. And again, hits principle. He is trying. He's trying to get back into the play. So at no point am I questioning the effort of Austin Booker. Austin Booker's effort is awesome. Tight end, erased. Bounced off. Again, he's trying to make a play over the top because the, ran, the run came to the other side. That's all fine and dandy, but just no impact. Hard to say anything about this play, right? It's a screen to the opposite side. The ball's out so quick. Austin Booker has no chance to do anything, so whatever. He's still lost in the pass rush rep, in my opinion, but what do I know? Left tackle, isolated. He does push him back, right? He's pushing him back. That's the knock on Austin Booker. He needs to gain weight. He needs to gain muscle mass. He's not strong enough. Well, he's pushing a left tackle in an NFL game, preseason or not, backwards. But is that because the field is bad? We already saw the left tackle slip once because of the poor field. Is that happening again? I can't tell. Are you telling me that this is a pass rush win, PFF? Because it's not. That's not a pass rush win. Uh, Two-point stance, right? He's standing up. Tries to come inside. Left tackle still quick enough to get engaged. He tries to spin out of it. Spin moves cute, right? Put it on your little Twitter highlight reel. Where's the impact? There's no impact from Austin Booker on this play. Once he gets touched by the left tackle, Austin Booker's play is over. That's what I'm trying to say. He had no impact on the game. It was a bad game from Austin Booker. Not because he's a bad player. But I think that if you ask Austin Booker, he'll say that he should have played better. And, of course, he always will. Left tackle. He's engaged with the left tackle, running away from himself. He's coming over the top. He's essentially a glorified linebacker at this point, ready to, you know, a weak side linebacker, ready to make a tackle. That's fine and dandy. So he's probably playing it correctly. And this is not a knock on his technique. I, I have no idea what the coaches want from him as far as a technical standpoint, where his hands are supposed to go. Where is he supposed to end up at the end of every play? For all I know, they could have loved the performance from Austin Booker. But I'm saying he had a bad game because he had zero impact on the game. Here, here's the one that everyone's saying, oh, this was a sack, it was a sack. Let me even just start over 
Look, look at the left defensive tackle, okay? The left defensive tackle right here. You can see my mouse cursor. This player right here. Forget about it. Knocks the motherfucker out. He's got the ball on the ground. Austin Booker has barely touched the quarterback when the ball is on the ground. Totally screwed him. And on top of that, where's the hustle from the, the Bears defense? There's no, you know, fumble recovery. That's the type of stuff that we need. But again, Austin Booker, did he win that rep? Yes. He he was able to drive the left tackle back and got inside. So out of how, however many pass rush attempts, that's the first win that he had. I don't know when his first snap was, but it's 11-19 left in the third quarter, and that's when Austin Booker's first impact play had came. And again, cleaning up a sack that the interior defensive lineman got. Next play. It's not third and forever, but it's second and forever. So what are they going to do? They're going to pass the ball. We know that. Austin Booker comes in, tries to do a loop. Again, completely negated. Ball's out. Zero impact from Booker. Left tackle. This is something that I think the, this is where you see the flash. Not, not the anime character or whatever. He is the manga character, right? The comic book character. I don't even know who the flash is. But Austin Booker on this rep. This is third and forever. He knows they're going to pass if he didn't already know the previous play watch this this jump step to get inside boom just the one just the one little drive off with his right leg right all of a sudden that left tackle is still he hasn't even got set to my understanding the way an offensive lineman works they do the same thing every time they want to be in the same base they want to get one two three back and then fight you with their hands or whatever he's still in the process of doing that and booker's got the inside edge free path to the quarterback that is good. That I also probably would call a pass rush win now that I'm being hypercritical of it. Because if this guy tries to hold onto the ball, you'd expect Booker from this position to absolutely clean up. But the ball has to come out fast. The quarterback knows that, and God bless him, because he would have got blown up by Austin Booker. So Austin Booker, two in a row almost, in third and forever situations. There's your pass, uh, situational pass rusher. So that that's good. So what is that? Back to back impact plays, impact and a half plays, one point five impact plays. Again, tries to come in on the guard. The run is being tossed away from him. But as soon as the guard touches him, that's it. Actually, no, I don't even know where my eyes are. That the circle that um, I'm bearing down was terrible. I'm just kidding, buddy. He's at the bottom of the screen, right? So th this is a fun one. You're telling me that your game plan against Austin Booker. And Austin Booker's unblocked. He's got nothing. And when you see a defensive lineman with their feet together and their hands up, that's a telltale sign that they had a not a good rep. So he he's in he's lost. You know, cue the Chris move. Get that guy a map. He, he's totally lost, right? He does end up closing on the quarterback and forcing the ball out of his hands. That's great. But this play probably should have gone. I don't even know if he caught... No, he didn't cut the ball. Or catch the ball, rather. It's second and ten. And the, the the clock lines up with that, right? So incomplete pass there. Left tackle. As soon as he's touched, the play is over. He does try and get involved in the play. I'm not knocking the effort. It's there. The effort is very clearly there. That's not a pass rush win. The left tackle knows probably that if there's going to be any sort of leakage from the quarterback, it's going to be to the quarterback's right. So the left tackle knows as long as I engage after he's helping with the left guard, the um helping the left guard that is. Watch watch the rep from the left tackle. Boom, he's on. Is at 69. He's got his hands on him. He's helping him. Now he's a kick out, kick blocking him. He's like a chip. It's like Austin Booker was thought of as an afterthought on that play. So there's no scheming against Austin Booker. And again, just no impact from him. Um, who is that? That's 52. 52 is the one who wins on the uh, on the right tackle and forces the quarterback out. 52, for all intents and purposes, had a much better game than Austin Booker. A really bad throw and catch, but that's, again, because 52 forced him out. So... I'm going to leave it with at there, guys. Um, again, one take. I, I've i seen that compilation of footage while I was working two or three times. So this is, let's call it, be generous, my fourth time. Let's call it my second time intently watching that. That's my thoughts. 
And I'm sure you guys at this point, if you're at this point in the video, I didn't want it to be 20 minutes, I'm sorry. I'm sure you guys have had some nasty things written up in your head at least, ready to pump out, and I don't care, man. I'm not claiming to be some sort of guru. I'm not the guy who coached Julius Peppers into the Hall of Fame. This is just my thoughts. A lot of those plays, he had zero impact. But what did we see? We saw that when it was second and 26, third and 26, when the court, when the pass rusher, the quarterback, everyone in the stadium knew that they were passing the ball, Austin Booker put impact twice. He had, for my money, 1.5 impact plays. That's pretty good. For what the situation is, you want your rotational pass rusher to be able to show out in those situations. Now, everywhere else, it was a bad game. Overall, the quantity, what was it, 24 snaps, and I'm calling it 1.5 impact plays? I'm saying it's a bad game. And if that if that's what that comes out to, right, if you say the 1.5 is two pass rush wins, and there were, what's the math on that? Two would be 25% of eight. So he had eight pass rush snaps, and two of them were victories. Whatever, there's your 23%, whatever, you know, that's 25. But 23%, you know what I'm trying to say? You can split hairs. Let, let me end the video with a quote. Shout out to Adam Mason. This quote comes from Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera, who was involved in two Super Bowl defenses. One as essentially the right-hand man to Levy Smith when the Bears went in Super Bowl 41, And... He took a team, the Carolina Panthers, to a Super Bowl, which the Panthers don't want to talk about that Super Bowl. But Ron Rivera, great coach, great player for the Bears. Ron Rivera's quote is, and it's not, he's quoting it from someone else, but this is where I heard it from. So again, shout out to Ron Rivera. Liars lie, sorry, figures lie and liars figure. That's what I'll say for anyone who's trying to use PFF. Please fucking finish me. PFF, if you're using that as your, uh, you know, as your backbone of your argument, watch the tape, man. Watch the tape. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm wrong. You've got the timestamps. If you don't have the footage for whatever reason, go sign up for Twitter for free. Follow I'm Bearing Down because shout out to you, buddy. Your footage compilation here was great. Thank you for letting me use it, even though I didn't ask. If you have any issues, let me know. But guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bear down.